Good afternoon. My name is Tim McGurthy. I'm the Deputy Secretary for Housing and Economic Development for the Commonwealth. I'm also the Vice Chair of the Seaport Economic Council, the new Vice Chair of the Seaport Economic Council. Um, our Chair, the Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito, is on her way. Um, so I'm going to kick off the meeting and she'll be joining us in a few moments. Uh, as we begin, um, we have been asked since uh, just recently in the spring, the governor signed a new executive order related to the Seaport Economic Council. And so in light of that, in recognition of the fact that this is in some ways a new council, uh, which includes a new member, uh, in addition to me, Ed Barrett, <coughs> who is our new uh, representative joining the Seaport Economic Council for his first meeting. Um, what uh, the Lieutenant Governor had asked that we uh, do a new swearing in for all the council members under the new executive order. So if the council members could stand for a moment and repeat after me, holding up your right hand, I state your name, Thomas I, I, Thomas 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 do solemnly swear, do do solemnly swear, swear that, I that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and will support the Constitution thereof. So help me God. So so help me God. God. I state your name, I, I, Lisa Lisa Engler. Engler. do solemnly swear and affirm that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all the duties incumbent upon me as a member of the Seaport Economic Council according to the best of my abilities and understanding. Agreeably to the rules and regulations of the Constitution, agreeably to the rules and regulations of the Constitution, and the laws of this Commonwealth. And the laws of this Commonwealth. So help me God. So help me God. I state your state your name. I Thomas Jones. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Thank you. Um, as we begin, it would be helpful just if the members of the Seaport Economic Council could go around and introduce themselves. Again, I am Vice Chair of the Council. My name is Tim McGurthy. I serve as Deputy Secretary for Housing and Economic Development for the Commonwealth. But why don't we start down the end here? I am Seth Luttrell. I am the uh, Port Authority Deputy of the City of Salem. I am Cesar Duart. I'm the Director of Engineering and Operations for the New Bedford Port Authority. Nathan Payton from MassDOT. I'm the Deputy Chief of Staff and uh, designee for Water Transportation for the Commonwealth. Tom Koch, Mayor of the City of Quincy. I'm Lisa Barry Engler. I'm the Director for the Office of Coastal Zone Management. I'm Harlan Dolliner. I am the immediate past president and current board member of the Marine Oceanographic and Technology Network, the uh, Trade Association representative <coughs> for the Council. I'm Edward Barrett, and I'm a commercial fisherman. I'm also the president of the Massachusetts Fishermen's Partnership, which is an umbrella organization of the 19 commercial fishing associations in the state of Massachusetts. My name is Sam Mundell. I'm the regional representative for Bristol Dukes in Nantucket County. Hi, Tom Bushy, regional representative for Plymouth and Barnstable counties. Uh, good afternoon, Maurice Scudder, Highline Cruises and uh, Trade Associate, uh, Passenger <coughs> Association. So I want to welcome all the council members, the attendees, those of you who have come out to join us today, members of the public. Uh, thank you for coming, and thank you for the town of Harwich, who is hosting us today. Uh, and with that, I'd like to introduce town administrator Christopher Clark, who will give us a word of welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome to Harwich. Uh, hopefully the weather's nice, and uh, the second part of this I think will be even better, where we'll go down and uh, see Sacquatucket Harbor, and you can see your uh, hard work and your uh, er energy in terms of money. Uh, and what it, we actually put it to good use for. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, acknowledge uh, on behalf of the town that we do have several selectmen here today, uh, Mike McCaskill, uh, Stephen Ford. I know Larry Ballantyne was here earlier, and Ed McManus is, I believe, on his way. And then just to uh, also acknowledge and appreciate uh, Sarah Peak, <clears throat> our state representative, who's been very active and very helpful to the community, is, is here. Uh, so on behalf of the town, welcome to Harwich, and we appreciate that you uh, gave us an opportunity to host, and we'll see you at the uh, harbor later. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, and as mentioned, we do have a number of elected officials in the room, uh, Senator Patrick O'Connor, Representative Sarah Peake, and Representative Josh Cutler. 
If you all would like to stand up and say a few words, more than welcome. I too just want to uh, reiterate uh, Chris Clark's welcome to Horowitz and thank you so much for uh, having this meeting here today. Here we go, they're standing behind me, I love that. Uh, for having this meeting here today and also thank you for your work on behalf of uh, our harbors and um, infrastructure as it relates to the harbors. Um, certainly the folks that are here from the Cape and Islands, uh, you know, and Mass Fishermen's Partnership, we've worked together on health care issues and things like that. You know how important our harbors are to us. Our tourists may see it as a beautiful destination and a place to grab a bite and enjoy the view, but we know that the uh, commercial and recreational enterprises that uh, come and go out of our harbors are, are vital to our year-round community and vital to our economic vitality. And I'm especially looking forward to supporting the applications of two of my communities today, both the town of East Ham and the town of Orleans with their Rock Harbor projects. They'll give you a more fully fleshed out presentation, but both of these projects really go to the heart of keeping Rock Harbor economically viable and um, a, a place that uh, uh, works well for visitors and year-rounders alike. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to thank the uh, Seaport Economic Council. Uh, as a state senator who represents all coastal communities, uh, the resources you've been able to provide our communities, including uh, an application today from Duxbury, has been invaluable. Uh, you see the uh, individuals who are going to work on the projects that we've put forward. You've also seen some beautiful areas in our community. I believe one of the previous meetings was out at the uh, Marshfield Maritime Center, which uh, wouldn't have been possible without the support of the Economic uh, Council. So thank you for all your support. Uh, very happy to see uh, Ed Barrett as a new member of the uh, Economic Council as well through the executive order. So uh, thank you, and I wish you well in this uh, upcoming year. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm always happy to stand behind Sarah Peake. Uh, my name is Representative Josh Cutler from Duxbury. I want to thank the Seaport Council for your tremendous uh, work and for the support of our terrific uh, application here in the town of Duxbury. We have a number of folks from the town and from the Maritime School who are here. It's going to be a great project, so I want to thank all of you for supporting that. And um, it's truly, uh, we appreciate all that you do, so thank you. Great. Thank you very much. So as mentioned, the council was relaunched uh, in August 2015 under the Baker Police Administration to deepen the focus on the maritime economy, on promoting economic development, and supporting resilient infrastructure across the Commonwealth in the 78 coastal communities. Uh, after our meeting today, if all the projects are approved, the Seaport Economic Council will have invested $41 million through 87 grants in 40 of those coastal communities. The Council's grant program supports working waterfronts, local tourism, coastal resiliency, and maritime innovation from the North Shore to the South Coast and right here on Cape Cod. We're uh, pleased to be here on the Cape for this, this of our meetings. We meet three to four times a year. This has been a difficult year for the Cape in terms of uh, both the emergency that occurred under the tornadoes as well as the challenges of dealing with the shark uh, presence off the coast. We're going to have someone speak to the administration's efforts on that uh, matter soon. Um, we also, as part of the response to the tornado, did a $1 million Cape Cod Small Business Emergency Loan Fund for impacted businesses and $100,000 to the Cape Cod Chamber of Commerce to promote the Cape as a quality place to visit. So we recognize that this is a challenging year, and we hope that our efforts, both upon the, for the Baker Polito administration, but also the Seaport Economic Council, is an opportunity to kind of help bring things around and keep things moving forward. Um, today, we're proud to be part of a CAPE that is open for business, um, celebrating an event immediately following this meeting at the Sacquatucket Municipal Marina. For those of you who are here, feel free to come join us. Uh, to celebrate the completion of that project, the Seaport Economic Council project. Um, and so with that, we're going to talk about a number of different things during this meeting. And I will say we are going to try to keep this meeting very tight as a result of the following event at Sacquatucket. We're going to try to hold people to tight time standards. Um, I will give a quick overview of where the Seaport Economic Council has been, and then we will turn towards our individual projects that are up for review, projects that have been reviewed by the Seaport Economic Council in their briefing format, as well as by a professional port committee for recommendation. So with that, um, we want to give a quick update on the past work of the Seaport Economic Council. 
Uh, as mentioned, the council was reconstituted in 2015 with an effort to create a more economic development oriented piece. We recognize the importance of the blue economy, the importance of our coastal infrastructure. And so the Seaport Economic Council was kind of reinvigorated with a goal towards funding and moving forward projects that help promote both the coastal economy and resiliency. Um, maritime economy is a big impact here in Massachusetts. 17.33 billion in output, 135,000 jobs, uh, 6.8 billion in direct labor income. That represents 555,000 establishments, 90,000 workers. Um, it's an important and uh, growing industry here in Massachusetts. And one we look to capitalize on as part of this blue economy initiative, part of the regional strengths surrounding our economy. Um, originally, the Seaport Economic Council was a Seaport Advisory Council, relaunched, as mentioned, in 2015, with a mission to deepen the maritime economy, promote economic development, and support resilient infrastructure in the 78 coastal communities. We are focused primarily on capital grant programs to support working waterfronts, local tourism, coastal resiliency, and maritime innovation, although the Lieutenant Governor has asked us to also think about the next four years. As the Baker Polito administration begins a new tenure, uh, they look to rethink how are we doing our programs, where are our funds going, and are there new ways for us to support the maritime economy and our coastal communities. The Seaport Economic Council will be talking briefly about that today as a body, and then we look to continue that discussion into our winter meeting um, coming up towards the end of the year. Grants awarded by the Seaport Economic Council. Uh, not including today's meeting, 39.6 million awarded for 83 projects, leveraging significant funds. One of the values of the Seaport Economic Council is it can get federal and local and private matches to make the work go even farther. 33.9 million leveraged, um, significant work uh, and significant app, uh, impact. Over 4.9 million people live along our coast, within our coastal communities. We have a number of different grant programs. Our innovation grants are a resource to connect the ideas uh, about blue economy and blue innovation to economic growth and opportunity. Um, support projects that promote job creation in the maritime sector, and that includes shipping and trade, marine science and technology, coastal recreation and tourism, ocean-based clean energy initiatives, and the seafood industry. A big part of that focus is the Grand Challenge uh, organized at the Massachusetts Technology Collaborative under the John Adams Innovation Institute. Uh, since 2015, the Seaport Economic Council has awarded 10 projects, 2.4 million in grants. We're gonna hear more about that program at our winter meeting when we hear the results of the first round of the Grand Challenge awardees. Next, grants to public education institutions. Grants range from uh, focusing on coastal assets and maritime tradition to investing in transformative public-private collaborations. Four projects have been awarded within this category for 1.6 million. It includes to organizations like Mass Maritime Academy, Roxbury Community College, UMass Dartmouth with their Mar uh, Marine Science Corridor. Um, so it's a focus on connecting the innovation and uh, understanding the research and development of our economy to our maritime and blue economy itself. Local maritime economic development planning grants um, focused on giving coastal communities the opportunity to think about the future and plan for their needs going forward. Um, 1.7 million awarded in 15 planning grants, Madam Chair. As uh, examples of those projects, Eastham Harbor Plan, Beverly Municipal Harbor Plan, uh, we've done similar programs in Chelsea, Cohasset, and Dartmouth. So some of the projects we'll see today that'll come up before the Seaport Economic Council began as planning grants and are now visible in the implementation and uh, uh, infrastructure program. Maritime Economic Sector Strategy Grants. This is our effort to understand where we are and where we're going to help guide our approach in the future. Um, we've supported a number of different reports and, and studies across uh, various institutions looking at the maritime economy, looking at the blue economy, 
and understanding where is there opportunity for investment, where is there opportunity to leverage growth into new jobs, new industries. 600,000 was awarded for five different projects. And then finally, the bread and butter of the Seaport Economic Council, the kind of meat of where we have been is the supportive coastal infrastructure projects, those projects that help local communities rebuild seawalls, address the needs of the harbors, uh, you know, support the Harbor uh, Pilots Association. Um, we give up to a million dollars of funding per project. We've done $33 million to date. Um, resilience has been a key piece of this, making sure our coastal communities are prepared for changes in the, in the environment. Um, and all of the grants that we'll look at today are part of these coastal infrastructure grants. And then as mentioned, the Lieutenant Governor has asked us to think about as a council where we will be going in the future, what we should look at as we uh, begin a new four-year tenure as a council. Um, in order to do that, we've done some initial groundwork of reaching out to the 78 communities that fall on our coastlines through letter and survey, asking for their feedback on priorities. And then we'll ask it, we'll touch on it today, but we'll also ask this group to discuss kind of needs and process forward in the winter at our meeting. So with that, Lieutenant Governor, I don't know if you Great. want to add. Thank you very much uh, for the presentation. Thank you to all the members uh, for uh, convening today. I want to welcome the newest of our membership, Ed Barrett. Uh, I want to also, uh, through you, thank the commercial fishing industry representatives for advocating for a seat on this council. Uh, you were successful, and uh, we're really thrilled to have your perspective and, most importantly, your voice Ed, and there's no better person in our mind to, to do that uh, than you. We thank you very thank much. You. I want to thank, uh, did someone want to clap for that? <laughs> I brought them in. <laughs> A fan club, yes. So you have to travel to every meeting now from this day forward. No, we're kidding. It's great. I'm really happy uh, to have that uh, perspective really important to us. Uh, thank you, Tim, for that, for your membership, uh, also new, although we have this Worcester inner uh, <laughs> Commonwealth perspective. Uh, I don't know if he shared with you, uh, but he had his early uh, beginnings in life uh, in Plymouth, yeah. so has that uh, coastal uh, infrastructure in his heart, and it's a rightful place for you to be to be able to work on uh, the coastal matters uh, that are really important to us and the industries that are reflected um, along our coastline, our beautiful coastline in Massachusetts and the waters off there. Uh, so thank you. I know David Pierce is here uh, somewhere. David, in a few minutes, I'm going to tee you up before we do uh, the grant uh, reviews uh, to talk about, uh, from your perspective at DMF, uh, the matters uh, relative to the shark and seal population on the Cape and how we are working together to manage that. But before so doing, I want to acknowledge my colleagues in the legislature. Uh, thank you so much. I see Representative Cutler, I see Senator O'Connor, and Representative Peake. And I particularly want to thank Representative Peake for your advocacy uh, for these matters and helping us formulate uh, the coalition here on the Cape uh, to address these very, very serious issues and come up with, uh, at least up to this point, uh, the emergency response uh, that's been needed uh, because of what happened, the tragic outcomes of last year. Uh, these included advocating for the funds, which we are now over $400,000 of funds, uh, thanks to your leadership, uh, working with the executive office, we work together, and doing things like uh, intensifying the emergency response with uh, call boxes, some com a community uh, purchased an ATV, uh, much better uh, communication and coordination uh, of response. But there's obviously uh, more to study and more to do around this issue, and David will be able to provide some further insight about where we are, but more importantly, the things that we can work on going forward. Uh, this uh, council is, is so important, and as uh, you have just heard from the presentation, has done uh, a lot of great work over the course of the four plus years that we reconvened uh, the council under Governor Baker's executive order and adding that economic uh, component to it and making sure that we're leveraging that coastline within 
uh, the, one of the 78 communities and the opportunities from that coastline for economic activity in that community, in that region, uh, north, mid, and uh, south shore and south coast areas of our coastline and knowing that it adds to the overall economy of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And I believe we've achieved a good balance of work with our capital investments uh, in this coastal infrastructure. And we've tried very hard not to just think about uh, the investments as a, a transaction on a project, but to think about the investments in the context of our economy and to think about how we can use the council uh, to fuel the blue economy, have a more educated and skilled workforce to ramp up more opportunities in the blue economy, how to leverage our academic centers, you know, like the Marine Science Center, Mass Maritime, UMass uh, Dartmouth, of course, um, in our community colleges and our vocational career technical schools to get more of our students thinking about the blue economy and marine science and what that offers for a job and a career at the end of a high school point or community college point or if they go beyond and think about growing that talent uh, for this industry, uh, talent that we can retain here in the Commonwealth to service uh, the blue economy uh, going forward. So all of that's really important as we think about uh, the next uh, chapter of the Seaport Economic Council's work. So uh, really happy about that. I'm really also happy that while we have a mayor of Quincy that I think has the most coastline uh, of a coastal community, would that be? No, I don't think we're that. No? Well, we got well, we got well, we got to put Boston <laughs> out, out aside, but you have a, a lot to manage. But when you think about not only the cities along the coastline, but some of the smaller communities that uh, started out with the council from, with a small grant to have a, a, harbor, a harbor plan, uh, thinking about uh, how to manage uh, that better and just to take the seed money from the council and work with your local tax base to think about how you can improve it, uh, fitting in with the character of your community but also taking it to the next level are some of the things that we're proud of as a council to have worked on. Uh, so thank you uh, for your commitments. Um, just a couple of things and I'll, I'll toss it off uh, to David. and. Uh, what I like also about this effort is the, re the relationship building that we've done with our local officials, our harbor masters, and uh, as you can see, when, when something happens um, on, a, on a crisis standpoint, that those relationships really kick into gear and they're based on trust and have already um, established a working uh, way uh, before that time. Uh, you take what happened last month on the Cape with the unanticipated tornadoes touching uh, down in the middle of the height of your tourism season and wondering, oh my gosh, how are we going to come out of this and make sure that our tenants turn over on, renters turn over on Saturday and uh, people still come over that bridge and still know that our restaurants and literally all th activities on the Cape are open for business. And uh, we worked very hard with all of you to have a very rapid uh, response and turnaround. Uh, I want to thank the local officials in the room for your leadership and also to turn around a, a million dollar fund uh, for the small businesses and then a hundred thousand dollar marketing campaign working with the Cape Cod Chamber to literally tell the world that the Cape is open for business. We've managed through this effort and uh, we're here. So that was really uh, important to all of us. Uh, from here, we're going over to Sacquatucket Harbor uh, to have a completion ceremony. I know it's been complete for a little bit, but we're really excited to, to mark it and see it and look at how those investments produced uh, what we're going to see in, in a little, little bit of time with, I think, $2 million of investments through this council uh, together with your significant local contributions. Uh, you've transformed uh, your harbor assets, and clearly I know that they're, they've been put to, to the test in good use uh, this summer. So we look forward to joining you, uh, Chris, for uh, that purpose. Uh, why don't I turn it over uh, to Chris first and then to David, unless, Chris, have you Chris already done the warm welcome? welcome. Okay, yeah. already done the warm welcome. welcome. To you. All right, well, <laughs> okay, well, thank you and for hosting us today. And now I'd like to invite uh, David Pierce to come up and give us a brief update on, on uh, the subject matter. 
Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Uh, very pleased to be here. And frankly, after seeing what the, this group has done uh, and will do, I'm more than encouraged that indeed great work will be done for our coastal communities. Obviously, being the director of the Division of Marine Fisheries, being focused on the ports and infrastructure myself, uh, your work is um, contributing in a major way to uh, continuing the success of our maritime culture. And I'm very happy to see that uh, Eddie, Edward, that uh, Eddie is now uh, on, the, on this council. I've worked with Eddie for four decades, I think. We were little boys at that time, I believe, Eddie. Uh, Eddie has held my feet to the fire, and um, I've done the same thing, I believe. Uh, regarding sharks, uh, everyone is interested in sharks, certainly here on, on the Cape. And I'm quick to uh, acknowledge uh, Representative Sarah Peake's efforts, along with Senator Sear, getting to the communities together to talk about public safety, because that obviously is on the public's mind. We finished a five-year study, a Division of Marine Fisheries, a five-year study uh, on the population status of uh, white sharks off of the Cape. Uh, staff working with the Atlantic Shark Conservancy are putting together the numbers, doing the modeling. It takes a little bit of time, uh, but uh, they're making good progress on that. The public uh, wants to know uh, what we have accomplished through our research, uh, and that'll be available in the not too distant future. But we've now begun another five-year study, and this particular study is more focused on public safety, which is why we're working more closely with the cities and towns. And I thought I'd give you a quick update on the numbers, that is, uh, what we have seen and how we are seeing these sharks. We have uh, tagged 22 white sharks this summer. We have 22 acoustic transmitters uh, on the ocean bottom, enabling us to detect the presence of, uh, of these white sharks. Obviously, not all sharks are tagged. We'd love to have that situation uh, in hand, but uh, that's not possible. But nevertheless, we're learning a lot from the sharks that we have tagged, and the public is being given alerts. How many, how many have you? We've tagged a total of 178 overall this time. So 170. Since when? Over what period of time? I'm sorry. Over the uh, past five years and now this summer. So this summer we've tagged an additional uh, 22 white sharks. And we do that with the cooperation and financial support of the White Shark Conservancy uh, out of Chatham. They're partners and they've done wonderful work with us and we're greatly appreciative for the contributions they have provided, as well as the support of the Baker Polito administration that has provided significant funds for us to buy receivers and to do a lot of contract work necessary to work with uh, the fishermen, with spotter pilots to uh, track the sharks and to help us with that tagging enterprise. We uh, have 100 logging receivers in Massachusetts waters. We've got 26 receivers in Cape Cod Bay. 37 in the outer Cape Cod area that is on the back side of the Cape, 24 in Buzzards Bay, 8 in Massachusetts Bay, 8 in Vineyard Sound, Nantucket Sound, 5 in Boston Harbor, where also the sharks visit, 3 south of Martha's Vineyard, and 2 in the Cape Cod Canal. So it's does an extensive array. Do you understand what this device does? Yeah, it's a transmitter, so it, it, these, these receivers will pick up the the uh, signals that are sent by the devices that are attached to the white sharks. So we're learning more about their movements, and we actually have received support, uh, financial support, from a few other organizations. Uh, we have uh, received $23,000 from Save Our Seas Foundation. This is research on fine scale uh, behavior using a very specialized uh, tag. And again, the Atlantic White Shark Conservancy, they've provided approximately $200,000. So again, the very important element of our research. So uh, perhaps what I'll focus on now very briefly is that we have real-time receivers. That is not receivers that give us information down the road as time passes, but immediate uh, knowledge of where the tag sharks may be. And we have uh, a real-time receiver deployed off of Wellfleet. That's Newcomb Hollow, where, of course, we had that uh, tragedy up last year, the, the death of that uh, young man. And through these real-time receivers, we actually are able to real-time transmit signals, uh, knowledge to uh, public safety officials and also lifeguards. So this is basically the first time we've done this, and we hope it will be successful. We're very optimistic. And then with additional financial resources and with the cooperation of the towns, we should be able to have more real-time receivers that will go a long way towards helping the public feel more confident that we're better aware of where these sharks may be. We'll never be aware of where they all are, but nevertheless, uh, this is a good step uh, in the right direction. And again, the thank you for the support you've provided, uh, Lieutenant Governor. Okay. And any questions from members of the council? Okay. 
Anything that the reps or senator would like to add? I, I would just say I think that um, this is an issue that uh, it took years for us to get here, and there's no magic wand solution overnight. I think continuing to fund science and technology is the way that we're going to work towards increased public safety. And Lieutenant Governor, you were very kind in your uh, and generous in your comments towards me, but uh, I want to take a moment to thank you in particular and Governor Baker as well for the close to $400,000 that um, you just came up with uh, out, of, out of the public safety line items. That has made already a very real difference this summer. And uh, it was uh, remarkable and greatly appreciated. So thank you. Okay, we'll build on that. Uh, David, thank you very much for that presentation. Uh, I hope that was helpful for you to hear. It certainly was for me. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, I think we can transition to the uh, uh, project proposals. Uh, okay, if everyone's ready. Uh, we have Wareham, Gary uh, Buckminster from the Department of uh, Natural Resources in Wareham. Uh, please come forward and talk about uh, the rehab of the onset uh, bathhouse project. I am not Gary Buckminster. I'm uh, oh, Mark Rasmussen from Buzzards Bay Coalition. Gary Buckminster is here with me. Um, thank you very much for the chance to present this project again today. Um, I was with the council last year, and this is the second uh, round of support, so thank you for hearing us out. You helped get us started with this idea, and help, hopefully you can help us finish this project as well. Before I go any further, I actually am really excited to be on the agenda with the Duxbury Bay Maritime School Award because for the past four years, this project that we've been creating has been very much inspired by copying what they've done in Duxbury. So it's exciting to be <laughs> on the same no agenda. There's no pride today. in authorship there. Yeah, I mean, I, right. there is pride in authorship, but I think that's good. That's yes. great that you can take a best practice or a best project and try to incorporate those features. It's a wonderful features. program up there. Great. Thank you. Save you some, some money too, perhaps. Yep. So um, this is onset. This is um, our project here is goes this way here we go you can't read that but basically so S seaport economic council support is supporting a partnership between buzzards bay coalition a conservation nonprofit here in buzzards bay um, and the town of wareham to create an onset bay center at the onset bathhouse an on the water exploration and community engagement center focused around coastal encouraging coastal tourism economic development and environmental stewardship um, outside of the city of New Bedford, Onset, the community of Onset is one of the most economically depressed parts of Buzzards Bay. It is a place where kids can grow up near the water and never get in a sailboat, never get rowing, never go sailing. So we're looking to fix that problem with this project. Uh, you helped get us started with a $350,000 grant. We have now leveraged those funds with more than $2 million in private fundraising for this idea. Um, now we're looking, we're within $500,000 of our total goal, um, not considering the grant you're considering today. Really quickly, um, that was on over how much period of time? That's that's over the past two and a half years, and a half years of fundraising. Okay. Yep. Um, this is just a very brief summary on onset. Onset really is uh, a hidden gem. You could live here your whole life and not get off the highway and see onset. Um, but amazing public access resources. Uh, onset Pier and Onset Beach, I think, are some of the most uh, best coastal assets Massachusetts has. Cape Cod Canal cruises are based out of there, charter fishing boats, wonderful public access facilities. But again, the community that lives in Onset and Wareham immediate area has a hard time accessing the bay that's right on, outside their door. So right here, if I can use this pointer, right there next to the Onset Pier is the Onset Bathhouse, owned by the town of Wareham um, and leased to us um, uh, through an uh, act of the legislature and signature of the governor last year, a 99-year lease to our organization to renovate it. The bathhouse was historically sort of the center of summer life in Onset. Uh, it has been a dance hall, a concession stand, a place for lifeguard stations, um, and a traditional bathhouse. In recent years, it's really fallen into disrepair. The town has mostly shuttered it, and it's when we got together with the selectmen, they said, your goals for Onset really pair well with this underutilized building. Can we get together and, and do this project? So this is what it looked like when we took it over. This is our vision for what it will look like. Um, the first floor will stay very similar to its traditional uses. This will be boat storage, life jackets is where kids will, get, will start their day in the second floor with classroom space, lockers, bathrooms, uh, kids and families, as you say. It's not just a youth facility, it's a community facility. Get started on the second floor, move downstairs to the waterfront, and get out on the water for the day. This is where we stand right now. So um, 
if you've seen Onset Beach in the summer, you can all imagine that we could not have done construction <laughs> in July and August on this beach. Literally, people are on their, with, on their towels right up against our building. So we, we suspended construction for the past two months. We are at 50% completion. Uh, the entire foundation structure is built. It is the most challenging part of the construction. This is a high velocity flood zone. So we had to do a lot of thinking about coastal resilience and making this a flood proof building. We've now planted 1,300 coastal bank plants. It's ready to go, 50%. We start up construction again on Monday for a completion next May, where we hope you are cutting a ribbon next May to get this thing open for the season for, for the year. Great. Um, we've already started on programming. I won't spend much time here, but this is designed to be a center to get you on the water any way you want to be on the water. If you're a kid that's excited about fishing, we want fishing programs. Learn to sail, community rowing, stand-up paddle boards, uh, safe boating classes, a, a waterfront center, not a sailing school is what we're looking to build here. And we've already started doing that with our local community boating organization, YMCA. We've acquired 100 acres of land nearby to, for sailing docks and access. The island in the middle of Onset Bay is also part of the center now. And with that, I've, I've taken up too much time. I want to hand it over to Gary Buckminster, the Harbor Master, to say a few words if I can. Thank you, Mark. Okay. Good afternoon, Gary Buckminster. I'm the Director of Natural Resources and the Harbor Master for the Town of Wareham. I just would like to uh, thank everybody uh, for allowing me to represent the Town of Wareham uh, with this event. Um, I, and just the uh, wonderful investments by the Massachusetts Seaport Economic Council. Um, I'm fortunate to have been involved with this project from the beginning. Um, when Mark came to us and said, hey, I've got this idea, and we, we all gathered and, and they did this proposal. Uh, from that concept, the, uh, the realities have shown that this Onset Bay Center is taking off, and it's, it's an extremely uh, great investment for our town. Um, through that cooperative efforts, we now have kids lining our docks. First time they've ever been on a sailboat before. Some of them have never been in the water before. We have kids that are taking their first splash on swimming lessons. We have families coming down learning about our aquaculture, learning about shellfishing history, understanding our bay's quality uh, and our vital natural resources. Um, uh, the, progress, uh, the progress in community outreach that's already been created through this uh, evolving Onset Bay, uh, Onset bay uh, Center has been above and beyond my expectations and um, I, I'm just, the, the, the environmental, uh, the uh, educational investments are limitless for this. Mm -hmm. Um, on be, uh, just on behalf of the town of Wareham, I'd like to thank Lieutenant Governor Polito, Governor Baker, and the entire board uh, for your assistance with this. We appreciate it. Thank you. Members of the council, do you have any questions, any feedback? I have a quick question. Sure. So, hi, Mark. How are you? Nice to see you. Um, just curious about the outreach to the local community and how you're going to be bringing in some of those kids that haven't been able to sail or get out on the water. Yeah. Um, there are a couple organizations that are already active in the area, particularly there's a, the Boys and Girls Club is right up the street. So our programs, our pilot programs, we've done together with them. Mm -hmm. So they spend half of their day with us and they go back to the Boys and Girls Club the other half. Um, there's the Wareham Public School ha operates a wonderful summer program. The YMCA has chapters there. So we're looking to be the on the water partner for other organizations in the area. Um, and Onset is a, still a walkable village. If you get, you know, you know Onset. If um, there's actually a lot of activity just in town, in the village, um, so I think community community outreach is going to be easy with this one. It's one of the easier components. Building that building is the harder one. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Not a question, but just a comment. I think it's I think it's a great idea. We have a uh, we can't collect now because we have a 40 year relationship with yeah. the uh, village of Onset, and I think it's just another really great opportunity to continue the revitalization of a really beautiful area and, I, and I'm excited about that. Talk a little bit more about your experience using the in onset in the Wareham area. Sure, sure. Houses. I mean we, we've been, uh, it's really a, a, a hidden operation. I mean I've never, of all the various uh, vessels we operate, I've, I think 100% of anybody that's ever been on Cape Cod Canal has had a positive experience. It's just an amazing area in, uh, you know, onset along with the Cape Cod Canal and um, I think, uh, you know, this, this boathouse and uh, just another attraction to bring more people and more notoriety to that little village is, is just a, a wonderful uh, opportunity. Yes. And if I cannot do a, a quick commercial, that, what a great opportunity for this project that's come up is it is time to actually start hiring staff for this place. So we are looking for an amazing director of oh. this center, and I have the job description here to pass out to the council. Please spread it within your networks. We want a fantastic candidate for this job. Well, so. just the, the key components of the, the job, yeah, so the skills that you're looking for. 
so running the entire program here, so building a community based uh, on the water program, so sailing, rowing, learn to swim, fishing programs, so the program aspect is the lead. But aside from that, they have a lot of facilities in Landstorm. This comes with 100 acres of land, a publicly accessible island, and this facility, and to be the public face for the, commu for the project in the community. So Sounds like a lot a of really fun. great job. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. All right. Wonderful. Any other questions, observations? Okay. That's great. Thanks. Thank you very much. All right, next up is the town of East Ham. Uh, it's the phase one uh, part of this project, Rock Harbor Harbor Master Building and Revitalization Project. I always get your fingers crossed at this point. <laughs> um, good afternoon. My name is Shana Brogan. I'm the uh, manager of the Natural Resources Department for the town of East Ham. Um, and first off, I would like to thank you for considering our project. We're really looking forward to making some improvements down at the harbor. Uh, so this is the Rock Harbor Harbor Master Building and Revitalization Project. Uh, a quick background on the town of East Ham. We have a population of 4,932 residents, a seasonal estimated population of 20 to 30,000. We are bordered by Cape Cod Bay, the Atlantic Ocean, the town of Wellfleet to the north, and the town of Orleans to the south. And part of the town is located in the Cape Cod National Seashore. So Rock Harbor is a state public access facility with a parking area and boat launch. We have 48 dockage slips, uh, short-term rental dockage available, walking paths, uh, a public beach, and three acres of uh, adjacent conservation land. So our project goals consist of improving and enhancing our existing amenities, um, particularly commercial access opportunities and accessibility for all users, ensuring that the project elements are uh, resilient to climate change, such as having elevated buildings and portable structures. Uh, we would also like to establish a town staff presence at the harbor so that we can assist the public and manage the harbor. Um, we are also looking to improve our um, accessibility to other nearby water, by waterways, um, reducing our response time to those. Um, so our project deliverables and process will consist of having public meetings to facilitate input on the design from the public, um, holding project team meetings throughout the process. Then we're going to have developed engineered design plans and landscape design plans, which would consist of potential walkways, <coughs> benches, um, storage areas, concert and event platforms. Um, then we'll obtain the permits and we'll receive our construction cost estimates. And uh, the, real the real important part of this project is to receive um, feedback from the public as to what they would like to see down at these um, amenities and what in areas. Um, so that's mm -hmm. going to be an important part of the permitting process. This is a picture of the docks that the town just recently replaced um, in full this past year at Rock Harbor. And then this is the area of the proposed Harbor Master building, um, and that is the shed that we're currently using as storage. <laughs> so remember that now the before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And this is the, also the area where we're hoping to have some walkways, plantings, benches, um, and some other amenities for commercial use. And this is another picture of that area. Thank you very much. Oh, you've already had some public input yes. regarding the project. Just describe what you're hearing in the community. So uh, we are currently undergoing a, a harbor planning process. We've had two public meetings. Um, our first one was held this past We had 55 attendees, and then we just had one this past uh, July. So we're hoping to finish up that process. Um, and the feedback that we've heard is uh, water quality improvements are needed. Uh, education of all the various uses on the waterways, um, boat storage at the harbors and waterways. Um, we've had a great array of feedback on these areas, so we're really excited about making some of these improvements to really listen to what the people are saying and what they would like and, and implementing that. Okay. Uh, yes, please. The feedback you received um, differ between the March meeting and the more recent meeting and the summertime meeting kind of based on your seasonal population? No, it, it, surprisingly it didn't because the first meeting we had a mixture. It was more commercial use, users, um, but generally we're hearing the same sorts of um, things, education, uh, water quality, 
um, really making sure that we have a niche for our commercial users to have their designated parking spaces and amenities that they need and you know boat storage they're all sort of it's it's all the same so it's it's good it's the all, type um, of an enhanced economic activity as a result of this investment can you describe that a little bit uh, so we're hoping to have uh, more convenience for our users down at the harbor, um, whether it's storage, ice machines. Um, we're looking at the feasibility for some sort of shorefront protection to retain what we have. Um, and then just uh, some attractions that will bring people to the harbor. Um, so it will benefit some of our commercial users if they would like to start a echo tours, um, the kayak tour companies, that sort of thing. And am I right, this is complementing work that Orleans is doing as well along the area? Yes. It, it, so some of the uh, commercial users that are over at the bulkhead in Orleans across the harbor are from East Ham. So it will definitely benefit both users. And we have a reciprocity for the commercial shell fishermen. Um, they could obtain permits in East Ham and Orleans vi and vice versa. Okay. So it will benefit both communities for sure. Any other questions from members of the council? Yes, Ed. I'm happy to hear that you'll be taking more comments. Uh, uh, in the audience, I, I, we have a fellow fisherman, Nate Davis, who uh, has been a long, long time commercial fisherman from that harbor, and I believe he's the member of the Orleans Waterways Committee. Uh, so uh, look forward to uh, hearing how it all turns out. Yes, and another that reminds me that we are having a meeting with our commercial fishermen tomorrow morning. Um, so that's part of the harbor plan. We're having a third public forum to, to get their feedback. Okay, that's a great idea. Excellent. Anything else from the council members? Okay, great. Thank, Thank you, you for the presentation. All right, the town of Duxbury and your um, maritime school. Community Rowing Center and Science Center construction project. Uh, this is it's exciting. Welcome. Thank you very much uh, for having me uh, here and uh, considering our project uh, for funding. My name is Ted Lawson. I'm the executive director of the Duxbury Bay Maritime School. Um, it was neat hearing Mark's presentation about the Onset Bay Center because yeah. sort of looking back 20 years, that's where DBMS was 22 oh, years ago. That's great. Um, and in the, the last 22 years, uh, DBMS has grown significantly and its impact on the community has grown as well. Um, DBMS was founded in 1997 uh, to be uh, a place of public access to Duxbury Bay for anyone uh, who didn't have access. And uh, at the time, uh, the access to Duxbury Bay was limited to folks who were members of a, an exclusive yacht club or people who owned their own boats. The community sailing program in Duxbury was on an inland pond when Duxbury Bay was right at our, our doorstep. So um, the school was founded uh, to, to fix that problem and to create access for all. Um, the top picture on the left is what the boatyard looked like in 97 uh, when a group of uh, folks in town formed a 501c3 and uh, scratched together some capital to purchase the land uh, and forever change uh, Snug Harbor and Duxbury mm. Bay. Um, 22 years later, uh, we serve over 3,000 people in our uh, programs each year. We have over 10,000 people come to events on our campus. Um, we're deeply involved with the aquaculture and the oyster industry. We grow uh, close to 20 million oyster seeds under our floats every spring. We provide uh, year-round dockage for many of the oyster farmers in town. Um, in 22 years, uh, the school has had a profoundly positive impact on Snug Harbor, on the Duxbury community, but also on the South Shore community. We, we have over 100 different towns represented in our students uh, that come to take classes. Um, so it's been a pretty remarkable journey for the last 22 years. Um, the reason that we're here seeking funding now is uh, we are uh, engaged in a capital campaign and project to complete our campus and specifically to give facilities for two uh, very full uh, and high demand programs that don't currently have the facilities uh, on our campus. Uh, the first is our marine science program. Um, our marine science program up until this past summer had been housed in a seasonal tent in the back corner of the parking lot uh, and so the first part of this project has been um, converting some storage space in our administrative building right against the water and turning that into a science lab and, um, and a resource uh, place for 
uh, for students, um, for folks in town who want to monitor bay qual uh, water quality, um, and uh, have year-round access to this classroom space. Um, the second part of the uh, project is building a row community rowing center. So tearing down the, the last uh, big tin shed, which was a relic of the past, and replacing it with a two-story um, community uh, rowing center, storage for all of our shells and equipment, uh, and then a training, uh, off-the-water training facility on the top floor for all of our rowers. Um, these two programs are, are bursting at the seams, uh, and these facilities will meet the needs of our, our current um, participants, but also allow for important growth uh, going forward. Um, so the outcomes that we're looking forward to through this program is obviously improved facilities for our existing programs, um, but also expansion, um, geographic expansion, bringing more people onto our campus to engage with the marine environment, um, uh, doing more outreach. Currently, a quarter of our 3,000 participants uh, are through outreach efforts, either through scholarships or programs that we, um, we greatly reduce or fully um, uh, take care of the uh, cost of, of programming. Um, we hope to expand that with these new facilities. Uh, seasonality, now we'll have year-round opportunities for our students, not just seasonal. Uh, and we hope that the skills uh, and knowledge that they'll gain through these facilities will allow them to uh, continue on in uh, exciting uh, collegiate and career paths relating to the marine environment. Mm -hmm. The community will get, uh, we're going to have more jobs down at the waterfront, um, greater access to and, and awareness of the aquaculture industry that we're so intertwined with, um, and uh, just, uh, I think, a, a better knowledge for the community of the importance of the marine environment, uh, and finally, just improving the access uh, to the bay, which is what we're all about and why we were originally founded. Well, thank you so much for your consideration. Yeah. Well, I, I thought that the opening statement around where uh, Wareham, onset Wareham is and where you are uh, is really inspirational, but it also shows you know, the great effort that's needed to, to begin and then sustain it, yeah. and you have sustained this, which is a real credit to the community. Uh, just a question, a couple questions, and then the members uh, obviously will have some as well. The uh, Marine Science Lab, you talked about it being under a tent for a period of time. How long have you been uh, working on those matters with students uh, under this temporary so, location? So the, it, was, it was its permanent home, but okay. it was temporarily located right. each season under a tent. And so uh, the, the marine science program has evolved and grown. Uh, probably it's about 15 years old. When oh. We started initially bringing kids on campus and, and teaching them about marine science. It has evolved and grown significantly. Um, we have uh, that sort of seasonal pop-up model. Um, we, we vastly outgrew that. I see. Um, we had uh, over 800 kids from seven different towns come on field trips to oh. our campus this past spring uh, to learn about marine science, full summer programs, and now we're hoping to uh, do year-round outreach to schools where we're bringing kids to campus nine months, nine months of the school year uh, to engage in marine science. Is there a, is your public school uh, involved in this program? Do they embed some of the curriculum or at least use the Ab work yep. of the center? Absolutely. In their science classes. Yep, or we're, math we're, or we have a close relationship with the Duck Free Public Schools as well as some of the public schools in the other towns uh, around the area. Oh. Um, all, every single Duck Free student comes through our campus uh, multiple times during their uh, time in, in the school system. Uh, and we're hoping to, we, we feel we've just scratched the surface of that, and there's such potential to, uh, and, and the schools are very excited as well at the potential that exists. Do you hear from employers? Uh, that they are sort of providing internships or work opportunities for these students to bridge them over to future employment? Absolutely. Uh, the biggest industry uh, that's come about in the last 20 years in Duxbury is the oyster industry, uh, which uh, employs a ton of folks both seasonally and year-round. Pretty nice jobs, right? For yeah. Students. <laughs> And many, many of our participants go on uh, and work uh, through that's high great. school and college um, on the, many of the farms in town. That's great. I was yes. curious about yeah. the uh, summer, most of your employment is summer employment. Yeah. You have a lot of the, the secondary and, and primary school teachers involved in your program? We have some. Uh, we, we definitely have some uh, 
Yes. Uh, so that can continue to keep a continuity alive. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yes. And I, I think, again, I, we're just starting to realize the potential that exists uh, for partnerships with the local schools. And um, every school we've talked to um, has been so excited about these new facilities and what they'll mean for their students. Cool. Thanks. Do that. Do you want to bring that? Uh, yes, Ed. This um, I'd like to attest to the success of the uh, Maritime School. Uh, my niece went through the program and uh, because of it was able to get a scholarship to Dublin Academy and now uh, she's slated to be a senior at uh, Brainerd College. So uh, it was all kind of uh, came out of uh, her participation in the program there. Thank you. That's wonderful to hear. That's great. Yeah. I just have something um, more of an accolade. I see in the notes here that uh, the new science center, I believe, maybe both the rowing center and the science center, the marine reading lab, will be elevated mm -hmm. at more than two feet above what's required by code. Um, that's great to hear. I wish we could do that yeah. everywhere along the coast. Um, and I also see that you're going to use that as an opportunity to educate your students about the importance of building uh, on the coast and how to build better on the coast so that we're, we can be more resilient in the future. So I just want to say uh, that's wonderful <coughs> to hear and, and thank, thank you. you for thinking about well, that. Kudos uh, to our board, a very forward-thinking uh, board, and uh, it, no one blinked an eye at, at the idea, even though it was uh, it, it raised the cost of the project significantly. It, we all felt it was the right thing to do, and we're excited about uh, leveraging that for education going forward. Uh, any Can questions? I, uh, one, you mentioned, uh, it says in the proposal, 100 towns, and you talked about working with public schools, but you must be working with nonprofits as well, I would think, to pull in from that big of a region. Yeah, we, uh, we have uh, great partnerships with a number of nonprofits, uh, both Duxbury based. Uh, Kingston Recreation Department is another. We have a relationship with them where s kids in, in Kingston can sign up for our programs through their Kingston Rec website. Uh, and come over to, to Duxbury to take classes. Uh, so we have many partnerships uh, throughout the region. Uh, one of them, I think, is Camp Wing. So can you, you talked about the rowing program expansion potential yes. with this investment to include uh, others in need of special assistance. Can you expand on that? So Crossroads, uh, Boston-based uh, nonprofit that uh, has a campus in Duxbury uh, brings um, underprivileged uh, urban youth uh, to Duxbury for a summer camp experience. Uh, and back in 2000, I think, very early on in DBMS's history, um, we uh, connected with uh, Crossroads and uh, we bring um, 24 of those individuals for a week at a time each day from West Duxbury where their summer camp experience is uh, to the bay. Uh, and we call it our Maritime Adventures Program. Um, and they, we give them every type of adventure we can possibly uh, expose them to in those, uh, that week. Um, and one thing that this new facility will have is indoor rowing tanks, um, which will uh, allow those, those kids who, some of them have never been on the water before, to get into a tippy uh, shell uh, first time is, is a big ask. And so this will allow them to be in a tank, uh, put oars in their hands, a coach at their side, um, and get the, the fundamentals of, uh, of the rowing stroke prior to um, the somewhat tippy uh, and less controlled environment yeah. uh, of the bay. That's, that's great. That's fantastic. Any other questions from members of the council? That's a great presentation. Thank you very much for sharing. Thank that's you. great. All right, in the town of Orleans. Walk, right? No, we just did that one. Where am, I, am I missing you? Nope, we, are, we, we did, did that, right? No, we did, no, we did East. We did East. East. Yep. East Camp. Okay, Town of Orleans, Rock Harbor Commercial Wharf Improvement Project. <coughs> Good afternoon. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, my name is Mark Matheson. I'm a chairman of the Board of Selectmen for the Town of Orleans, and I have uh, Christine Player with me from Fort Engineering. Uh, I'd just like to say, uh, that our partners in the town of East Ham uh, were here a little earlier. Um, ironically, growing up in East Ham, I had a small boat in Rock Harbor tied up to a little dock that was a couple of locust poles in the mud with some two by fours holding it to the bank. Uh, I worked as a mate on some of the fishing boats in Rock Harbor and uh, as a teacher at Nauset High School for 46 years. I have literally seen four generations 
of our local families come through that harbor and make a living. So we are here today because we are looking to uh, start a program of revitalizing our commercial dock at that harbor. And as we try and navigate the very difficult channels of dredging through our Nauset estuary and our Pleasant Bay estuaries where we have seen uh, many of our commercial fishermen leave because of the inaccessibility of, of those harbors, um, Rock Harbor becomes even more important. And the ability to run commercial operations out of this harbor, which has been in existence uh, <coughs> since the 1800s, is vital to the economy of both of our towns, Orleans and East Ham. And uh, our project, um, I'm going to turn over now the slide presentation to Christine to uh, walk through the project and our proposal for you. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for the opportunity to share with you a, a little brief overview of the project. Um, the timing is perfect where we talked a little bit about East Ham Rock Harbor side. Well, we're here to bring up the rear on the south side uh, with the town of Orleans. We have the thing here. No. Lifeline. <laughs> so I'm just going to give a brief overview just about the project site and the background of the project area. Like Mark has said, um, this site is very rich in maritime history, which goes back to the War of 1812 skirmish. Um, and then it also served as a salt work, works and packet service run to and from Boston back in the 19th century. Um, this harbor is essential to the economic hub that supports commercial fishing, shell fishing, and charters within Cape Cod Bay. The fishing fleet in, in Rock Harbor targets striped bass, bluefish, bluefin tuna, spiny dogfish, mackerel, surf clams, quahogs, soft shell clams, bay scallops, blue mussels, razor clams, and lobsters. And if I forgot anyone, I apologize, <laughs> but <laughs> we have quite a variety of fish and shellfish species. Um, that supports the commercial industry that uses Rock Harbor. Um, the area on the south side in Orleans provides seasonal dockage for about 120 vessels um, from April to December, and that includes sport fishing charter boats, commercial fishing vessels, the Harbor Masters search and rescue vessel, along with the number of recreational vessels. And lastly, there are some year-round dockage um, slips available for about six commercial vessels. So we're presenting the project um, to um, the council tonight. Um, basically, this project, um, the, the money will be used to fund um, the initial field investigations, um, alternatives analysis, uh, preliminary design, permitting, and final design components to the project. Um, the commercial wharf area is basically highlighted in, in that white dashed box. Um, Foth Engineering was hired by the town last year to do an inspection of all their bulkheads throughout the community. And based on this inspection, we found that the steel bulkhead, which is shown in the orange um, on the west side of the parking area, that steel bulkhead is in very good condition. Um, there's no recommendations for any improvements to that bulkhead per se, other than the addition of some cathodic protection to address stray current that does exist in the harbor and to preserve the integrity of the steel against corrosion. As we angle towards the east, there's a small timber bulkhead which is in disrepair. It's an interesting structure in that there's a bottom section of timber and then on top of it there's a top section of timber. It's about 90 feet long. It's a very unusual structure. When we did our inspection, um, the top portion of that bulkhead is failing and um, following uh, the, the report issued to the town, a loading restriction was placed on the parking area as well as the commercial wharf itself. So right now, um, the loading is restricted to just passenger vehicles, which is very limiting considering mm -hmm. um, the use that it is intended for, and that's for the offloading um, of catch. Um, the commercial wharf itself um, is a timber structure. 
um, the condition is decent. However, part of this study will um, evaluate different uh, configurations, perhaps some improvements we could make um, to the use of that wharf, as well as include um, a high capacity hoist to um, better provide assistance to the commercial community that uses the dock, and also to provide <coughs> some electrical upgrades. As we move around the corner, you can see that barely um, turquoise highlighted area. That is a, an embankment area that um, there is some riprap stone there that is failing. Um, there's some undermining of the road. And part of the investigations that will be done here is to consider either replacing that revetment to support the roadway, which provides obviously access into Rock Harbor. Um, but we're also going to consider the opportunity to perhaps install another section of steel bulkhead that will tie into the two bulkheads that you see as you start going west. Um, the first bulkhead that's shown in the, I think it's yellow, um, that was replaced by two, uh, the town in 2009. Um, and then as you move further west, uh, the town recently spent about $3 million replacing 540 linear feet of a failed bulkhead along with the public access boat ramp. So those, those two sections of bulkheads that are considered fairly new also have public access. So the idea with that area of the revetted um, roadway area to tie in another revetment structure, connect the public access to basically make a fluid connection point all around Rock Harbor um, for the public to enjoy and also to just utilize the, um, the beauty of, 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 enjoy the beauty of the harbor area. So in, in summary, um, this area of Rock Harbor currently has annual town dockage fees that are generated about, of about $71,000 um, to the town. And then as far as commercial fishing and charters, um, the town is seeing about $1.7 million. Um, recent investments made by the town, which I just spoke about, was um, in 2015-16, the town replaced that 540 linear foot of failed bulkhead and the public access boat ramp. Um, two years prior to that, um, the town, in conjunction with the town of East Ham, did do a maintenance dredging of the entire area of Rock Harbor. And the total dollar values was uh, approximately $4.4 .4 million of town monies that have been invested in Rock Harbor since 2014. So the maritime objectives supported by the project, um, the project is very critical to the sustainability of the commercial fleet. I think Mark um, gave a, a, a nice overview of the history and the importance um, of the commercial fleet within Rock Harbor. And it will also provide well overdue upgrades um, to the commercial wharf in support of current and future uses. Um, it's also very much important to ensuring safe workplace for the commercial fleet and public safety um, and use and access all of those things are very much at the forefront um, of this project and will be considered um, as we move forward and lastly the project does provide a catalyst for future growth of the fleet fleet which is viable in part because of the highly productive um, bay scallop and quahog beds that are out in cape cod bay And with that, thank you again. If anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer. There's a lot happening on Rock Harbor. It certainly <laughs> is. For a small harbor, there's a lot going on there today. Right. <laughs> uh, can you just briefly speak, and maybe East Ham as well, just how these projects complement each other? I think there's an obvious answer to that, that they do, in a sense, because you are sharing a beautiful uh, asset. But maybe you can just speak to how you work together. Well, I think there is a history, and Sheena, where are you? Oh, there you are. Hi. <laughs> um, there is a history of the communities working together because obviously they do share that resource area. Um, I think the timing is perfect um, mm -hmm. with you folks moving forward with your project um, because of the thought and consideration that collaboratively could be yes. put forward, uh, forward um, through both communities. And certainly there will be um, a coordination and, and, and public process involved coordination with our friends, the commercial fishing community, um, which I assume um, East Ham, I didn't want to speak on your behalf, but I assume you folks would be doing as well. Um, so I do think there is, um, this project uh, very much ties timing-wise as well as mission-wise uh, very well with East Ham's project. Okay. Is that, can you, would you speak to yeah, your I mean, side?
Uh, questions from members of the council? Can I ask, uh, you know, congratulations on the work you've done. Uh, you haven't come before the Seaport Economic Council before for funding, and that's great. You've done a lot of work. Um, and I think that's true of Duxbury as well. Just what, what I, I guess, just from a practical standpoint, what brought you to the Seaport Economic Council? What made you aware of our contributions to similar types of activities? Well, um, basically having to admit how old I am, um, I've been involved in the waterways business for uh, Basically, all of my career started with the Division of Waterways for the state. Um, I was present and very much a participant of the old C Seaport Advisory Council, its, its inception and, and its growth. Um, so it's been very much a part of my personal uh, career, and um, we've known you folks have been out here. And um, as a, a private uh, consulting firm, we always look for our public clients to assist them in finding the right connections for funding opportunities. And Rock Harbor really did seem to check all the boxes. Um, so with the support of the town, many folks are here today, um, we encourage the application to be filed and work with them collectively to get that to you folks. Thank so again, thank you on behalf of the town. And I do believe this is the first award the council is making to the town of Orleans. Yeah, I believe it is. All right. Well, we're over that halfway mark in terms of $41 million of our dollars to 40 communities, 87 projects over 40 communities. And that's why the survey, as you explained, is to all 78 to invite them to think about their coastal infrastructure in a, in a new way. So if I could just add to that briefly, uh, we alluded to earlier the amount of money that the town has spent mm -hmm. on projects. Uh, and I also spoke about the endeavor that we are now engaged in, in, in uh, on the opposite side of the Cape in, in trying to get a dredging program going in our Nosset Estuary, which is uh, almost completely impassable now. Our huge commercial fleet uh, has dwindled. Many of the boats have moved to Chatham. Chatham has difficulties now. They're trying to move here to Sacrawtucket mm -hmm. or to Allen Harbor or to Wichmere. So we have spent a lot of town resources over the years trying to maintain our waterways, our harbors, and, and continue the tradition of commercial fishing within the town. Quite frankly, we've reached a saturation point, so that any, any help that we can get from anywhere, whether it's the state or the federal government, is certainly welcome because we want to continue to ensure that our commercial uh, fishing uh, is able to continue in the future. And so we really appreciate the fact that we've had an opportunity to come before you uh, and look for those alternative resources to what the town has been able to generate on its own. Thank you. All right, and any more questions? Okay, thank you for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. They were uh, uh, great presentations today, thank you. Uh, if there are no further questions or more discussion from members of the council, uh, may I have a motion to approve as a slate each of the projects as presented to be funded in the total amount of one million four hundred ninety seven thousand two hundred dollars from Seaport Economic Council capital funds authorized by the legislature and allocated by the governor to the council. So moved. The motion and a second. Second. Okay, any further questions or comments? Okay. Uh, I call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 That concludes the vote. Congratulations uh, to the project. <laughs>
We're all in favor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, everyone.